Imagine, if you will, an era of Hollywood's golden age where larger-than-life heroes dominated the silver screen. In strides, Charlton Heston, a beacon of rugged charm and undeniable talent, claiming his space in cinematic history. But who was Heston beyond the blinding camera flashes and red carpet premieres? Was he truly the embodiment of the on-screen characters we came to admire? Charlton's daughter might just have some revelations that confirm what many of us suspected. As we dive deep into the life and legacy of this Hollywood legend, let's uncover the man behind the iconic roles. Are you ready for the reel to roll? The man behind the legend unraveling Charlton Heston's true nature. Charlton Heston. The very name conjures images of a dashing Hollywood lead wielding a sword in. Ben-Hur, or showcasing larger-than-life personas in films like The Ten Commandments. To many, Heston's towering presence was inseparable from his on-screen characters. Yet beneath this public facade, a more nuanced, complex figure emerges, one that may surprise you. The image of Heston, one of the most sought-after leading men during Hollywood's golden age, often overshadowed the real man behind it. Many saw him as the embodiment of those characters, strong, resolute, and sometimes even a tad imposing. But aren't we all guilty of placing celebrities on pedestals, often forgetting their human side? Consider, for instance, the perspective of Fraser Heston. Growing up as the son of an illustrious actor, it must have felt like living in the shadow of a giant. Surely Fraser watched Ben-Hur and thought his dad actually knew how to drive a chariot in real life. And why wouldn't he? Such was the magnetic aura of Heston on screen. However, the same Fraser also saw a side of Heston that didn't make it to the silver screen. The side of a loving father, a devoted husband, and a man deeply committed to his principles. Fraser's anecdotes paint a picture of a Heston less known to the public eye. For Fraser, and indeed for Heston's other child, Holly, their father was more than just a film star. He was a pillar of strength at home, displaying warmth and approachability. The Planet of the Apes star had a softer side, a side where he cherished moments of laughter and shared jokes, stories, and lessons with his family. In a world where many stars grappled with the balance between work and home, Heston remarkably seemed to navigate this challenge with finesse. And speaking of love, the tale would be incomplete without mentioning Lydia. Heston's better half for a staggering 64 years, their love story began in the halcyon days of college, with the romance blossoming amidst youth's passion and dreams. Their bond stood the test of time, even as life threw challenges. Through the tumult of the Second World War, where Heston served as an aerial gunner to the trials of Hollywood's fickle world, Lydia was the anchor in Heston's life. The actor himself once admitted that without Lydia, he wouldn't even be himself. Now isn't that the kind of love we all secretly yearn for? Hero at home, Heston as the family man. When one peers into the annals of Hollywood, it isn't uncommon to stumble upon tales of stars whose personal lives were riddled with tumult and chaos. But for every tale of heartbreak and scandal, there's a Charlton Heston, a man whose off-screen life by many accounts was as commendable as his cinematic ventures. While the world knew and celebrated Heston the actor, those who truly knew him, his children and wife, had a different story to tell, one filled with tenderness, devotion, and deep-rooted family values. Remember those iconic scenes in Ben-Hur or The Ten Commandments? While Heston dazzled audiences with his prowess and gravitas on the big screen, back at home, he donned a very different role, that of a devoted father and loving husband. The world may have revered the celebrity, but for Fraser and Holly, he was simply dad. Imagine Sunday mornings at the Heston household. The smell of freshly brewed coffee in the air, laughter echoing through the hallways, and perhaps Heston recounting tales from his latest film sets or sharing snippets of wisdom. For his children, he wasn't just the superstar the world adored, but a pillar of support, a guide, a friend. The larger-than-life figure on screen, who rode chariots and parted seas, was also the man who'd patiently help with homework, tell bedtime stories, or simply listen when they needed a confidant. Beyond the bond with his children, the romance between Heston and his wife Lydia was the stuff of legends. It wasn't just about youthful allure or fleeting passions. Their relationship was an epitome of steadfast commitment. From being college sweethearts to navigating the challenges of life together, their journey was testament to a love that grew and evolved over time. The image of Heston, amidst the ravages of the Second World War, 
holding on to the thought of Lydia back home, is poignant and powerful. For him, she wasn't just an anchor, but the very wind beneath his wings. But what made their bond so special? Perhaps it was the deep respect they held for each other, or maybe it was the shared dreams and aspirations. Whatever the secret sauce, their relationship was imbued with a sense of mutual admiration and trust. Heston's declaration that he wouldn't be himself without Lydia wasn't mere rhetoric. It was a heartfelt acknowledgement of their entwined destinies. A passion for justice. Heston's involvement in the civil rights movement. It's one thing to have influence and quite another to use that influence for a cause greater than oneself. Charlton Heston's commitment to social justice, particularly his support for the civil rights movement, showcased the depth of his character. As fans cheered for his movie roles, Heston, off the screen, played a crucial part in a transformative period of American history. As the 1960s dawned, America found itself on the cusp of change. Racial tensions were at a tipping point, with African Americans fighting for their fundamental rights. Amidst this climate of unrest and upheaval, many in positions of influence chose to stay silent, often out of fear of jeopardizing their careers or public image, not Heston. Picture this. Washington, D.C., August 1963. Thousands gathered at the National Mall, united by a shared dream of equality. At the forefront, alongside leaders like Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., stood Charlton Heston. Yes, the same man who led the Israelites as Moses and raced chariots in Ben-Hur, was marching for civil rights. The scene was symbolic, wasn't it? Here was a major Hollywood figure, using his platform to amplify the cries for justice. To the casual observer, Heston's involvement might seem surprising, but those who knew him understood that this was a man who wore his principles on his sleeve. For Heston, racism wasn't a distant issue. It was a grave injustice that demanded rectification. He believed in the American dream, a dream where everyone, irrespective of color, had an equal shot at life's opportunities. This wasn't about politics for Heston. This was about basic human rights. Now one might wonder what drove this fervent passion for justice. Was it a personal experience, a transformative encounter, or merely an ingrained sense of right and wrong? While we may never know the exact catalyst, what's evident is Heston's unwavering commitment to the cause. He didn't. Just march. He spoke out, used his celebrity status to bring attention to racial issues, and consistently advocated for change. This was a man who, when it came to matters of principle, never just sat on the sidelines. It's fascinating, though, to juxtapose this image of Heston, the civil rights advocate, with Heston, the Hollywood icon. The world saw him as this indomitable figure, an embodiment of strength and resilience on screen. And yet his real strength lay in his vulnerability, his willingness to stand up against the tide, to voice unpopular opinions and champion causes that many of his contemporaries shied away from. Isn't it ironic that the very qualities that made him a hero on screen, courage, determination, and resilience, were the same ones he exhibited in his fight for justice? Politics and principles. Diving into Heston's beliefs and convictions. In an age where most celebrities wore their political affiliations lightly, stepping into the arena when convenient and stepping out just as quickly, Charlton Heston's political journey was one of deeply held convictions. It was a journey that saw him champion causes he believed in passionately, irrespective of whether they were in vogue. For many, Heston's image as a vocal supporter of the civil rights movement was in stark contrast to his later political affiliations. It seemed almost paradoxical. How could the same man who marched alongside Dr. King also serve as the president of the National Rifle Association, NRA, and support conservative political campaigns? The answer lies in understanding that Heston was not one to be pigeonholed. He was an amalgamation of myriad beliefs and convictions, each held with fervor. His political journey wasn't about towing a party line. It was about championing causes he believed were just, even if it meant going against popular sentiment. When it came to the civil rights movement, Heston saw it as a fundamental issue of human rights. He believed with every fiber of his being in the American dream, a dream where every citizen, irrespective of race, had an equal shot at success. But as the years rolled by, Heston's focus shifted to other causes, ones that resonated with his evolving beliefs. 
His association with the NRA, which began in the late 90s, often raises eyebrows. Many wondered how the stalwart supporter of civil rights could also champion gun rights. For Heston, the issue was simple. The right to bear arms was a constitutional right, and any infringement upon it was a threat to freedom. As president of the NRA, he became one of the most vocal proponents of gun rights, often clashing with proponents of gun control. His support for Ronald Reagan's presidential campaign showcased another facet of his political beliefs. As America navigated the complexities of the Cold War, Heston believed in a strong, assertive stance against communism. In Reagan, he saw a leader who echoed his beliefs, a leader who would not just defend American values, but champion them on the global stage. But perhaps one of the most telling insights into Heston's character was his formation of a conservative political action committee. In an industry dominated by liberal voices, this was a bold move. It showcased a man unafraid to voice his opinions, even if they went against the grain. It's fascinating, isn't it, how a single individual could embody such a spectrum of beliefs. But that was the enigma that was Charlton Heston. His life was a testament to the fact that individuals are complex, often holding seemingly contradictory beliefs. And isn't that the very essence of democracy? The freedom to champion causes one believes in, even if they don't fit neatly into a singular narrative. Heston and Hollywood. A glimpse into professional relationships and feuds. Hollywood, with its glitz and glamour, is no stranger to tales of camaraderie and conflicts. The world of cinema, while magical on screen, often brews storms off it. And in the midst of this tempestuous world stood Charlton Heston, a titan in his own right, navigating the intricate dynamics of Tinseltown. His relationships, both sweet and sour, are tales worth delving into. Now imagine being cast opposite Sophia Loren, the Italian siren who took Hollywood by storm. Sounds like a dream, right? But for Heston, it turned into something of a professional nightmare during the filming of El Cid. The two, despite their combined cinematic brilliance, were like oil and water on set. Reports suggest that Heston found Loren's demands, from script changes to translation needs, exasperating. To think that during their iconic lovemaking scene, Heston reportedly chose to look off into the horizon rather than at Lauren. It's almost comical, isn't it? It's fascinating to consider the nuances of such professional relationships. Here were two titans of the film industry, each with their convictions and perspectives. While the world swooned over Lauren and her accolades, Heston seemed immune to her charms. It wasn't just about clashing egos, it was a collision of artistic visions. The result? A palpable tension that even film critics couldn't help but notice. The backdrop of El Cid might have been grandiose battles and sweeping landscapes, but the real drama, it seems, unfolded behind the scenes. But it wasn't just Lauren. Delving back a bit further, we find another intriguing on-set dynamic, this time with Yul Brynner during the filming of The Ten Commandments. Picture the scenario. Two alpha males, both commanding immense screen presence, portraying two titanic figures, Moses and Pharaoh Ramesses. The potential for conflict was rife, and boy did sparks fly. With Heston's towering height and Brynner's fierce determination not to be overshadowed, the set became a battleground of wills. Stories of Brynner's intense weightlifting regimen to match Heston's imposing physique add a touch of humor to this professional rivalry. Yet, Amidst the competition, a grudging respect developed. Heston, ever the gentleman, later acknowledged Brynner's stellar performance. It's heartening, isn't it? How art can bridge even the most considerable chasms. As we pull back the curtain on Heston's Hollywood relationships, a pattern emerges. Here was a man of principles, unafraid to voice his opinions, even if it meant ruffling a few feathers. His commitment to his craft was unwavering, even if it led to a few on-set skirmishes. But at the end of the day, it was this very commitment that made him the legend he was. However, to label Heston merely as a difficult co-star would be an oversimplification. For every tale of on-set tension, there are stories of camaraderie, mentorship, and lasting friendships. Hollywood, after all, was not just a place of work for Heston, it was his home, a place where he forged bonds that lasted a lifetime. Beyond the Silver Screen 
Heston's personal encounters and stances. Hollywood in all its glory often serves as a magnifying glass, amplifying the lives of its stars, casting larger-than-life shadows of their on-screen personas. Yet the true essence of an individual often lies in the moments away from the limelight, in personal encounters, and the stances they take when the cameras aren't rolling. For Charlton Heston, a life replete with cinematic achievements, these off-screen moments offer a genuine glimpse into his character. Heston's commitment to causes dear to him was undeniable, but his dedication went beyond mere public appearances or speeches. Take, for instance, his service during the Vietnam War. He may not have been on the front lines fighting battles, but he undertook a different kind of mission. After visiting troops on the front lines, he took it upon himself to connect with their loved ones back home, reassuring them of their safety. Isn't it heartwarming to imagine the comfort his calls would have brought to anxious hearts waiting miles away? This simple act of reaching out speaks volumes about Heston's character. He wasn't just an actor playing heroes. He was a hero in his own right. A man who, having served in World War II, understood the weight of war and the importance of human connections. As Fraser rightly pointed out, Heston's service during 1-2 could have been his get-out-of-public-service-free card, yet he chose involvement, engagement, and empathy. But Heston's personal encounters weren't just limited to wartime. Delve a bit deeper, and tales emerge of his interactions with people from all walks of life. From fans who approached him with starry eyes to peers who engaged with him in intellectual debates, Heston's approach was marked by genuine interest and respect. He had a gift, it seems, of making those he interacted with feel seen and heard. A Hollywood titan he might have been, but in personal encounters, he was just Charlton, engaged, present, and deeply human. As with any public figure, Heston's life was not devoid of controversies. His personal stances, particularly in his later years, often became fodder for public debates. His association with the NRA, his conservative leanings, and his unwavering support for certain political figures and causes ruffled more than a few feathers. For everyone within the sound of my voice, to hear and to heed, and especially for you, Mr. Gore. <laughs> From my cold, dead hands. But agree with him or not, one couldn't deny the consistency of his convictions. He wasn't one for performative gestures. When Heston took a stance, it was rooted in deeply held beliefs. A testament of courage, facing wars and personal battles. The canvas of Charlton Heston's life, painted with scenes of cinematic glory and personal encounters, is marked by moments of profound courage. Not just in the characters he portrayed, but deeply embedded in the sinews of his own story. From the ravages of wars to the intimately personal battles, Heston's life stands as a testament to resilience, grit, and an indomitable spirit. Rewind to the years of World War II, a global conflict that reshaped the contours of the 20th century. Amidst the turbulence of this period, a young Charlton Heston enlisted, choosing to serve his nation as an aerial gunner. The war, with its horrors and heroics, left an indelible mark on a generation. For Heston, it was a crucible of sorts, forging a spirit that would stand resilient in the face of life's many battles. The skies over war-torn landscapes bore witness to his bravery, but the true heroics, perhaps, lay in the heart that throbbed beneath the uniform. A heart that yearned for peace and longed for the embrace of his beloved Lydia. It's poignant to think of Heston during these years. As the world was engulfed in chaos, his thoughts often drifted to a singular anchor. Their love story, spanning decades, was the bedrock upon which Heston's life was built. Through the tumultuous years of the war and the vicissitudes of Hollywood fame, it was Lydia who remained his constant, his North Star. Such love stories, particularly in the glitzy world of showbiz, are rare. But then again, Heston was never one for the ordinary. Yet while wars test the physical and mental metal, personal battles test the soul. Decades after his 1-2 service, Heston faced a different kind of battle, a diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease. This insidious ailment, which chips away at memories and self-awareness, presented a challenge unlike any Heston had faced. But in true Heston fashion, he faced this adversary with grace, dignity, and an unwavering spirit. Can you imagine the irony? 
a man celebrated for his memory, for his ability to breathe life into scripts, grappling with a disease that threatened to erase those very memories. But Heston, ever the fighter, chose not to retreat into the shadows. Instead, he confronted his condition head-on, making it public, thus spotlighting Alzheimer's and its impact. In the midst of this personal battle, Holly, his daughter, painted a touching image of her father. She spoke of a man who, despite the creeping shadows of Alzheimer's, felt a deep sense of fulfillment. No empty buckets on his bucket list, she said. It's a moving testament to a life lived fully, with no regrets. Clashes and Collaborations Unpacking the El Cid Controversy Hollywood is a land of contrasts, a place where the most divine collaborations can sometimes spring from the most tumultuous clashes. And in this vast tapestry of interactions, the tiffs and tensions on the set of El Cid between Charlton Heston and Sophia Loren stand out as particularly memorable. Let's set the scene. The early 1960s, Hollywood's golden age is in full swing, and two of its brightest stars are set to share the screen. Heston, fresh off his Oscar win for Ben-Hur, and Lauren, an Italian sensation making waves in Tinseltown. On video, it seemed like a match made in cinematic heaven. However, as the reels began to roll, so did the disagreements. It's intriguing to think of what lay at the heart of their discord. Was it the immense pressure of living up to their star statuses? Was it creative differences? Or perhaps a clash of two strong-willed personalities? While one can only speculate, the manifestations of their tension were evident. Lauren, with her list of demands ranging from script rewrites to translations, seemed to be at odds with Heston's vision for the film. Such was the palpable tension that Heston, during their iconic love scene, chose the distant horizon over Lauren's gaze. Imagine that for a moment. Here were two of cinema's most celebrated figures, in a film that demanded intense chemistry, seemingly at loggerheads. But it's this very tension, this electric undercurrent, that added a layer of complexity to their on-screen interactions. Sometimes, art isn't just born out of harmony, it's crafted amidst chaos. Heston's discomfort with Lauren wasn't just limited to on-set dynamics. Reports suggest he found Lauren's burgeoning Hollywood influence and demands somewhat overbearing. And while the world might have been enchanted by Lauren's beauty and talent, Heston appeared impervious. It's almost humorous to think that he, unlike many of his contemporaries, seemed unimpressed by Lauren's allure. But to reduce the El Cid experience to mere on-set disagreements would be doing it a disservice. For beneath the clashes lay a commitment to the craft. Both Heston and Lauren, despite their differences, were dedicated to breathing life into their characters. And it's this shared dedication that shone through, making El Cid the masterpiece it is. The film, with its grand narrative and sweeping shots, stands as a testament to what can be achieved when professionals set aside personal differences for the larger artistic vision. Picture it, the golden sands of ancient Egypt, a pharaoh's palace, the grandeur of biblical epics, and amidst it all, a rivalry simmering between two titans of the silver screen. The set of the Ten Commandments wasn't just about recreating one of the most iconic stories from the Bible, it became the backdrop for one of Hollywood's most fascinating dynamics between Charlton Heston and Yule Brynner. The casting itself was a thing of legend. Heston, with his towering presence, was chosen to breathe life into Moses, while Brynner, the intense and magnetic actor, was to don the mantle of Pharaoh Ramesses. Both roles, powerful and demanding in their own right, required actors of exceptional caliber. And while Heston and Brynner fit the bill perfectly, the choice set the stage for an intense professional rivalry. As with any major Hollywood production, The Ten Commandments had its share of behind-the-scenes anecdotes. From director Cecil B. DeMille's grand vision to the challenges of recreating ancient Egypt, the journey was replete with highs and lows. But the Heston-Brinner dynamic added a unique flavor, a spice that gave the film an edge. Fast forward to today and The Ten Commandments remains a cinematic masterpiece, not just for its storytelling and grandeur, but for the performances that brought it to life. And while the sands of time have obscured many details, the tales of Heston and Brynner's rivalry remain as fresh as ever, whispered with a sense of awe and amusement, 
in Hollywood's hallowed corridors. Concluding this exploration of the The Ten Commandments saga, one can't help but marvel at the intricacies of filmmaking. Beyond the cameras and the sets, it's the human dynamics, the rivalries, and the collaborations that often shape the final product. Heston and Brinner, with their blend of competitiveness and camaraderie, added a chapter to Hollywood's rich tapestry, a chapter that serves as a testament to the magic of cinema. Because at the end of the day, it's not just about the stories we tell, but also about the stories we live.